I'm coming in, coming in at both the end and the start of something. Well, it's it's the beginning of a new relationship with a new publisher, and I I left the older publisher, if not the older one, but my former publisher, uh, with the ending of the series. And I had already decided to end the series because there were like 15 books in it, and what happens is you get so many characters, they're like a snowballing down a hill, and and I needed a vehicle in which the characters would check in and check out. So that's why I came up with the bed and breakfast. But when the readers heard that I was leaving my Cedar Cove city, they were just, oh, you know, I got tons of mail, please, please, please don't go. Well, I thought I had to set the bed and breakfast into some city, so I might as well put it in a city that the readers are comfortable with and familiar with and bring in cameo appearances from the characters that they know. If you start this book and you don't know the theater, you, you won't make any difference. You'll just be ca gradually introduced to them. But those who know and love them say, oh, there's Olivia. Isn't it great to see her again? I couldn't tell who was new and who was old, except there was one meeting at, uh, at a bakery or restaurant with, and, and there was a character named uh, a judge. And yeah, somebody Olivia. else. And I thought oh, that was Olivia. Okay. And that, that moment went, I bet that's one of the characters who's from the other series. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about your new sort of center point character because everything is in the third person except her stories. I wanted to do, do something just a little bit different, a little bit more creative, I guess. When I go to, to uh, plot a story, I, I do it against words. I'm a wordsmith and so I do it against words. So uh, any plot I have has to be relevant to my reader. It has to be provocative, it has to be creative, entertaining, and realistic. So that there is a real intimacy provided between the reader and um, Jo Marie, the character, with first person. You feel like she's per personally speaking to you and sharing her life experiences with you, but the others are the ones that are checking in and checking out. So there's, I wanted to put a little degree of separation. She's come to, to this place and started this bed and breakfast because she's kind of busted up herself. Yeah, it's a place of healing. And, and the first night that she's there, you know, her husband comes to her in this dream. And, and he's, he died in Afghanistan he, like a... Right, right. She's a widow and grieving. And he comes to her in this dream and, and he tells her she's going to heal here. And as the book progresses, she realizes that everybody who comes to stay is going to heal too. So, so the book, the, the whole premise for the series is that this is a book of hope, of healing and hope. And uh, hopefully it, humor will come in too. Two guests check into the bed and breakfast and, and they've got history, but so they're new and they're old at the same time? Yes, they're both former residents of Cedar Cove. And, one had, uh, it's been several years since she's been back because uh, her first year of college, she was in a car accident and driving and her best friend was killed. And she has carried this tremendous guilt with her and certain that everybody is going to blame her even though it was a complete accident. Um, black ice on the road, snowing, it was, and then her, the, her best friend's parents could just never could forgive her for this. So it's, she goes back and she confronts that. She's able to do that. Her brother's wedding, she's sort of forced back. The second story is a man named Josh who had graduated from high school in Cedar Cove. His mother had remarried when he was about, oh, in his early teens. And he never got along with his stepfather. There was constant aggravation between the two of them. But his stepfather, his mother died, and he, he just got out of there as soon as he could. And now his stepfather is dying, and he's alone, and he has nobody. And Josh comes back more out of responsibility and duty than anything, although he really shouldn't feel anything. And there's, there's still a lot of bitterness between them. But as the book progresses, the one thing that, that Josh comes to realize is he can thank his stepfather well, for one thing, and that is that his stepfather loved his mother. Uh, Richard, the, the stepfather who's dying, uh, what a cantankerous old guy. And I love that, like, there is growth and development, but he, he was a cantankerous kook to the last breath. 
Oh, I love that. Yes, well, you know, all people aren't all good or all bad. You know, there's that there's that happy medium where I mean, even Hitler was kind to animals. You know, so. Um, Yes, I had to choose. It had to be realistic. I mean, there wasn't going to be this moment where, where Richard just throws open his arms and says, "Oh, you've been my son all along." You know, it wasn't going to happen. You make no bones that this place is based on a real place. Your old, your my hometown. Well, your hometown. It's the town we've lived in for thirty years. Wow. Or twenty-eight. <laughs> and and the people are okay. They're not afraid that everything they say is going to show up in a book. I mean, they're they're all boosters. Oh, definitely. They even had, uh, uh, I guess it's three years ago now, what they called Cedar Cove Days. And 12,000 people from all over the world came. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, there, and 42 states were represented in something like seven or eight countries. That's, wow, you're, the Chamber of Commerce must have like a statue that they're making of you. <laughs> but I do have a key to the city, although I don't know what it means. Excellent. I, it doesn't unlock any bank vault. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Oh, Craig, thank you. The book is The Inn at Rose Harbor. I've been speaking with the author Debbie Maycumber and The Inn at Rose Harbor, published by Ballantine Books.